Hi, this is Matt Wojcik and Mark Green here with Greener Corporation. And today we're here to talk to you about the variables of cutting. So the function of a cutting knife in a flow wrapper or bagger is essentially to separate the bag from the roll of film. The other function that those the knives serve is to provide entry in the bag, whether it be a zigzag cutoff so a customer can easily tear at the bag at any point or a variable pitch type knife that provides uh, specified tearing towards a certain part of the bag in order for the consumer to only open in that portion of the bag. Um, so the cutting edge is pretty much defined by what your marketing team uh, wants to accomplish and provide to your customers. From that point, there's a couple different designs uh, factors that uh, to take in mind. Yeah, so uh, the other factors are how do you achieve the adjustment of the knife? And really there's two uh, basic methods of adjusting. Uh, I'm gonna put a graphic up here. The first is a screw style adjustment on the left where you have a conical screw that you can adjust the knife without removing it from the sealing jaw. Uh, the second is a shim style, and that's much more prevalent in the industry, where you remove the knife and put a uh, thin metal shim underneath the knife to achieve the, the cut height. So beyond design, um, there's a lot of factors that go into what actually makes a knife function well or not well. Uh, and those factors have uh, everything to do with the setup of the cutting head, the setup of the sealing jaws, um, whether or not the machine is a biting product and, and packing a lot of product into, it, uh, into the slot. There's a lot of different uh, factors involved in that. And I think Mark could speak to uh, some of those factors more specifically. Yeah, so we're going to start by assuming that you're using a good quality knife made from a premium material that's manufactured correctly. Uh, if you have a good quality knife, you shouldn't really have uh, cutting issues, right? right? It's a, uh, it, it is a wear item that needs to be changed when it's worn, and that's something that uh, I think people don't do in a timely manner. They, they don't tend to stop adjusting and you get into those over adjustment situations. But some of the other factors that those conditions in the machine environment that affect your, your ability to cut uh, really go back to, as Matt, you stated, the, uh, is there a product that is impacting the, the cut. Um, one of the biggest things that you can do uh, before making any adjustments uh, would be to observe what, what the condition of the machine is. Because let's face it, if that machine has been cutting for hours and it suddenly stopped cutting, something changed. Yeah, it didn't just go out of adjustment. Yeah, right? But frequently what do people do is they start to adjust. Right. And the things that they adjust um, are a lot of times the clearance of yep. the, the sealing jaws, which should never be used to get a knife to cut, and frequently is. Absolutely. Yeah, and that just essentially causes additional problems, um, i.e. your jaws start, start to uh, hit harder than they should. They start to impact your seal quality. Yeah. Uh, the other adjustment that people make uh, very often is they increase the temperature of the sealing jaws, right? right? Yeah, it's both increasing the temperature and uh, changing the clearance are oftentimes um, done because they're easier adjustments to make than actually changing the adjustment of the knife itself. So that can be done without uh, without even stopping production in most cases. So. Um, but in both cases, they're just, uh, they're band-aids that affect other things. And, and, and the biggest thing they affect is your seal quality. Yeah, and it's become so prevalent that in many cases, it seems like that is the correct adjustment, which 
it is in fact not. Uh, you should adjust the knife through the adjustment methods uh, that we talked about, you know, either the shim or, or the screw. Yeah, it, it's totally understandable that certain times there's a lot of pressure to get production out the door and nobody wants to take a machine down to make that proper adjustment. Um, in those particular cases, it's very important that if, uh, if the, an adjustment method is used, i.e. heat or pressure, that um, you go back when the machine, after the production run and, and change that back to what it should be and, and, and make the proper knife adjustment. So that problem doesn't continue to go on and on. Yeah, good point, Matt. And that's often missed, you know, uh, by the time things gets there. Uh, there, there may have been other adjustments made, yeah. uh, so we, we do recommend to, to check those uh, parameters before moving on, right? And one of the things that Mark uh, mentioned earlier is over-adjustment of the knife. And I'm going to put a graphic up to illustrate what we're talking about. So by over-adjustment of the knife, we mean that either the, the conical screws have been turned to uh, push the knife cutting edge out, above the, the jaw face or enough shim has been added to where it's sticking out above the jaw face. Uh, and this is something that it's easy to notice uh, just by uh, looking at the, the sealing jaws on the machine and the knives. Um, and in cases like this, um, essentially the knife is, is worn out and you're causing yourself seal problems. Right. And it's, it's simply a matter of uh, I think when people don't realize uh, when they should stop adjusting and move to replacing the knife. Uh, when you replace the knife, you should always replace the anvil with it. Uh, the, if you're not replacing the anvil, you're going to diminish the, the effectiveness of the new knife. Uh, and You're really not saving time or money by not doing that. All right, so um, as in most things, a, a lot of uh, using a part comes not only down to the, the design of the part and accuracy of the part, but it comes down to people. Yeah, so Greeter Corporation um, has a, a, a blog site. Uh, we do training, uh, and we deal with a lot of these uh, issues because right, cutting is probably the most common problem that, that people see. Uh, we can't go into the, the depth and breadth of, of, the, of all the cutting issues that people might be experiencing in the short time that we have with you here, uh, but uh, I would recommend that you visit the blog post. There's plenty of um, uh, articles, technical papers, and videos on there that go much deeper than, than we can in our 15 minutes with you now. Right. I'll uh, bring up that address for you guys to look at if you wish. Um, there's, you know, more than 20 or 30 articles on there, uh, videos and white papers, uh, all technically related to uh, cutting and sealing and forming um, that, that are basically geared towards helping you out uh, with your packaging operations. And also, um, we recommend that you guys share this with the maintenance mechanics and line operators, or at least let them know that it's available if they wish to view this kind of thing on their free time, because it, uh, they're the ones that most benefit from, from this type of knowledge. So to summarize, when you experience cutting issues, before you make any adjustments, make some observations. Okay, check the, that clearance, check that heat, clean the jaw, and while you're cleaning the jaws, it's a good opportunity to take a look at the anvil because the anvil often will tell us more about the machine setup uh, than, than the knife will. Uh, people often uh, call and they'll say, I'm having cutting issues, can I send you our knives? And I'll ask them to send uh, the anvils in because the, the anvil will give us clues to what that machine environment actually is. Uh, agreed, and we've got, got an example of that to show you. So in the image that you see on the screen there is, uh, it's an example of what a knife or what an anvil will look like uh, if there's backlash in the machine, which will create
create certainly create cutting issues. The the impression that's left on the anvil should be a nice even impression. It should hit in the same spot every time. Um, but what you see here is an example of the knife dragging across the anvil or hitting in multiple places over time, uh, which certainly cause problems cutting. Yes, and if you're not uh, versed in looking for this kind of a problem, uh, you might just replace the knife and anvil, uh, but the condition, the, mas the machine environment still exists and you are going to be prematurely wearing those handles. This is one of those indicators, uh, those uh, culprits that uh, causes undue wear to the knife. Uh, a lot of times people will say, well, one machine goes through knives quicker than another. Um, and this might be one of those you know, situations under the surface that you've not uh, you know, seen and it needs to be corrected to get a proper set of means. Well, I think that that pretty much sums up what we have for you today. Um, we can't go obviously into all the different factors involved and, and how to uh, how to solve those problems, but we are certainly available to take care of those issues for you on a one-to-one -one basis. If you'd like to contact us directly, either through the show or uh, directly through our website or telephone. Yes, if there's something specific that well, we were not able to address, please uh, do reach out to us. Uh, we'd love to uh, welcome the opportunity to work with you to help solve your, your cutting issues. Great. Thanks, all.